Cyberpunk 2077 is about to be updated with its long-awaited overdrive ray tracing mode, and CD Projekt Red has kindly granted us a DF the tech preview before it is released to check it out and see how it changes the game. So in today's video I'll go over the key changes and visuals brought into Cyberpunk 2077 with the new overdrive mode, and to show off how it changes the plain rasterized game from looking like this to looking completely different like this. I will also go over in particular how the overdrive mode differs from the previous ray tracing on its psycho setting and what the differences in visuals are as a result. So let us first start off with some simple comparisons to the game without any ray tracing whatsoever. Cyberpunk's ray tracing overdrive mode quintessentially replaces nearly all of the rasterized lighting with lighting achieved through a type of ray tracing. So nearly all the typical hallmarks we see of rasterized lighting are just going to be gone. Light leaking through walls like we see in this scene here with rasterized lighting? Yeah, none of that here in the overdrive mode. Shadows missing due to the cost and limitations of shadow maps? Completely gone with that overdrive mode. Indirect lighting making no sense and tons of things looking gray, weird, and like they're glowing in the dark? Of course, that is gone here with the overdrive mode. All of these typical rasterization issues and more that can be found throughout almost any modern game are eliminated as almost all the rasterization techniques are thrown out the window here in terms of how lighting is calculated for opaque objects. I probably do not need to say too much here versus the original rasterized lighting as it is quite obvious in the examples I'm going to be showing on screen right now. I mean just look at the differences here. Basically overdrive will fully transform the visuals that still had their roots in last gen into those visuals that we can expect for the next generation of game engines. It is truly a completely different looking game with overdrive ray tracing versus the rasterized lighting before. That's not too shocking though given what we've seen in the last few years. Metro Exodus enhanced edition or even Fortnite with Lumen have similarly shown what a big difference ray trace lighting can make to games that just use rasterized lighting before. Beyond its comparison to the rasterized graphics, the overdrive setting also shows differences that are quite large when compared to the previous psycho ray tracing setting that the game has had since launch. I mean just look at the difference here between psycho ray tracing and the new overdrive mode. Both are using ray tracing so why does the overdrive mode look so different and so much better? There are two reasons for that. The first is that the psycho ray tracing setting still used a lot of rasterized lighting in its visual makeup. The second reason for the profound visual difference is because psycho ray tracing setting of old was made up of a number of disparate techniques that on their own try to improve graphical realism, but since it's a variety of techniques coming together, they could be more limited than a holistic solution. A good example can be found with how local lighting is done with the psycho ray tracing setting. All local lights that were not neon in the environment were just done with rasterization. It was just that their shadows could be ray traced. The nature of that technique meant that many lights were still non-shadow casting, like we see here. Another big issue with the psycho ray tracing setting was that indirect lighting was still done with rasterized lighting in the form of image-based lighting probes. There was a limited single bounce of ray trace lighting from the sun, but the rest of the indirect lighting, including the sun lighting, was still done with that very coarse raster technique. That left the psycho ray tracing setting having the same issues as that technique has in any other game. It was just that ray traced ambient occlusion would try and limit the issues to a degree. There was still a lot of light leaking and weirdness going on though. Hence why that scene that I showed off earlier with the psycho ray tracing looked so odd. There was no skylight in that scene, and there was no sunlight as well in the back alley. So it was only lit by the probe lighting, and the probe lighting there was just really, really wrong. Overdrive ray tracing takes a different approach altogether. Instead of a bunch of disparate techniques, it does nearly all the lighting in two passes that work in a principally different way. So first you have the direct lighting, that is things from like artificial lights, neon signs, the sky, and instead of rasterized lights, combining with diffused ray traced emissives here, these aspects are now handled through through RTX DI, which does both specular and diffuse direct lighting. And instead of ray traced ambient occlusion, ray traced reflections, and those rasterized image based lighting probes that I talked about earlier for indirect lighting, all those things are superseded and replaced by a restir GI pass, which handles bounce lighting not just from the sun like before, but every single light and illuminated surface in the game. This means nearly all of the game's direct lighting now and indirect lighting is done through ray tracing. And in many ways, like a pure path tracer would, where each point you see in the world is the sum of multiple paths of bounced light. Due to these paths being traced multiple times, it produces images that are quite different 
than before. So one of the first big changes from the previous ray tracing mode, and of course the rasterization, is that every light emitting thing in the world now casts shadows from objects nearby. This is pretty unheard of in games, as even those games with ray trace shadows tend to limit the amount of shadow casting lights. That is why the previous psycho ray trace setting in this scene here looks the way it does. The nature of how shadows were traced means it would be too expensive to have every light like these here be shadow casting. But with the overdrive mode, lighting is being traced itself, and per pixel soft shadows naturally extend from the geometry, getting in the way as a byproduct of the technique. This enables every light to be shadow casting, and it's a big deal in cyberpunk where you occupy a city with tons of little and big lights everywhere. And as I always will point out, yes, the overdrive setting enables muzzle flash, shadows that are ray traced and yes they are glorious the other big benefit with the overdrive setting is how indirect lighting is completely different check out this scene here with the previous psycho ray tracing setting that one local light at the end of the alley is casting shadows but the shadowed areas are pretty dark and actually rather gray blue colored that is because the local lights do not bounce light around the scene with psycho ray tracing the bounce lighting is done with those rasterized image-based lighting probes which are as we know prone to great inaccuracy with ray tracing overdrive turned on, now multiple bounces of light are occurring from local lights. So that orange light is bouncing around the scene here and it inflects the color of each and every shadow there. And this bounce lighting also occurs for specular lighting. So if we look at the reflection of the dumpster here in the original psycho mode, the dumpster is reflected, but it is shaded in that reflection with the older indirect lighting system, making it gray and dark. With overdrive, there are two bounces of specular lighting occurring. So the reflections now showcase bounce lighting in them, giving the reflection a more accurate look. This is a big thing for Cyberpunk 2077 because of how much of the game takes place at night and indoor. Every single light contributes to global illumination, giving such scenes at times a mirror's edge look. And it's not just static lights like I've been showing off. Even car headlights will contribute to GI. In the old psycho mode, the car headlights hit the wall and the light stops there. In the overdrive mode, the light hits the wall and bounces around the scene. And in this case, the bounce lighting from the car's headlights is tinged blue due to it bouncing off of a blue shipping container. A second part of the bounce lighting now being done via ray tracing is that all the artifacts from the previous bounce lighting are gone. There are no more big chunky blocks of incorrectly shaded geometry found in the bounce lighting like there was before. Now just smooth per pixel gradients that don't look out of place. NPCs also no longer kind of have that white edge glow to their skin. Yep, that happened in the rasterized graphics and psycho ray tracing mode before due to the usage of image-based lighting. And boy, do those NPCs look a lot, lot better now. And lastly, sunlight and skylight bouncing around the scene via ray tracing will also give those areas affected by their indirect lighting a quite stronger and contrastier look than before, where the old IBL system kind of turned shadow regions into this almost unlit gray-blue look. So yeah, the new overdrive lighting is the real deal and levels up the game considerably. The art assets I always thought were really great before, but now they look particularly stunning, given that the lighting is much more consistent and physically based. As you can imagine though, tracing the paths of light multiple times has a very significant performance cost for real-time graphics. To give you a sense of what I mean, turning on overdrive mode at native 4K, which is an absolutely ridiculous amount of rays being traced per pixel given how multiple paths are being traced here, well that brings down performance in this scene here to 18 FPS on an RTX 4090. Yes, an RTX 4090 with all the special path traced might that that GPU normally shows. Obviously that would not be a good playable experience. The way to make it playable is the same way it is in many other games. Use DLSS. For example, going down to DLSS performance mode puts the game already in an extremely playable territory on this GPU, 59 FPS, and then turning on DLSS 3 frame gen on top of that brings the scene up to 95 FPS for much higher visual fluidity as I've shown off in my review of DLSS 3. This video used a mix of settings for the comparisons, but all of the B-roll was done in DLSS in performance mode and that's how I played the game and I think it looks incredible. And the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay frame generation from DLSS 3 also further increases that fluidity beyond what I can reasonably show in this video. And when I do get my hands on this patch in full, that would be the way I would want to play it. 
Well, there you have it. Here's our short video covering our technical preview of Cyberpunk 2077's Overdrive Ray Tracing Mode. Really impressive stuff that even in its technically unfinished form, as you've seen in this video, shows some amazing promise for the future. Now, with that being said, I hope you liked this video, and if you did like it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to support more content like this in the future, support us on Patreon to get years worth of our content in high quality for download. Other than that, comment below, follow on Twitter, and as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.